Uh, people talk about how valuable the arts are to our society, and sometimes they're talking about the financial benefits, but actually I'm talking about arts and culture as a bedrock of everything we do and everything we believe in. Therefore, it's no surprise that the finance minister would host the first ever Bloomsday celebration in the city of Belfast. I'm delighted that Paddy Scully came here to honour the greatest writer of the 20th century, the greatest book ever written in the English language, and really mark Bloomsday for Belfast and make sure that everyone understands that we want arts to be at the heart of everything we do. I want to uh, welcome up first our, our great friend, Senator David Norris, who, who I think he's certainly popularised Bloomsday. Um, and is associated with Bloomsday, as is, as is our, our guest today. Um, I asked him, I met him in the Senate, in the, in the Shannon, in Dublin, I said, we should really have a Bloomsday in Belfast. So when I told him we were doing that, he sent us a little note. So to get us started, Roisy McDonald is going to read this little note. This message from Senator David Norris. Thank you. Dear friends, um, I'm delighted to hear the good news from Marching and Willier that Bloomsday will be celebrated in Belfast this year, thanks to the involvement of Paddy Scully, the Arts Council and the Belfast Book Festival. I have no doubt it will be a very memorable and enjoyable occasion and I hope it will become an annual event. Uh, as James Joyce wrote in Ulysses, force, hatred, history, all that. That's not life for men and women, insult and hatred. And everybody knows that, this, that it's the very opposite of that that is really life. So, best wishes from David Knowles. It's late in the night in Zurich, and here I am, the worst for wear, and that aggravating ulcer. Oh, I wouldn't be in Zurich, only them Herr Hun and Mr. Limey are at their Antrim Martins again with their world war. How dare they have a world war when I was bringing out my latest opus? At this rate, Finnegan will never wake. Yes. Ah, oh, well. Every time I get to me bed, I'm woken by all the ghosts. Yeah. You watch the snow falling obliquely, silver and dark against the lamplight. The newspapers were right. Snow was general all over Ireland. It was falling on the dark central plain, further westward on the great bog of Allen, and further westward again, falling into the dark, mutinous Shannon waves. It was falling, too, on the lonely churchyard on the hill where Michael Fury lay buried. It lay in thick drips on the crooked crosses and the tombstones, on the spikes of the gate. We heard the snow falling throughout the universe, and gently falling, like the descent of their last end upon the living and the dead. <laughs> 